Okay. Yep. Just so you're running. That'd That's be affirmative, Jose. Yep. We'll go ahead. So this will come up here. Yeah. Stand by. We're live on Facebook. All righty. And uh, those of you that are joining us, you can have everybody else join us on Facebook. It's Business Leaders Live. You can go to TR1550KXEX. That's talk radio. tr 1550 KXEX, and you can share it on Facebook. Let's see here, and I'll make sure I get it out there too. It takes just a moment, I've noticed. There it is, just popped up. You can go in your notifications. Jared? Here. You see it yet? I don't see. Oh, right. oh Derek just call, is calling in. Well, Derek's calling you? Yeah. Oh, we got President Derek Franks of the Fresno Grizzlies will be joining us a little bit later. So, Greg, you, you, when you go to a ball game now, you see... Oh, yeah. I, I see somebody slide into second base. I'm like, oh, the club is going to have to scrub those pants. I yeah. See, <laughs> I see 4A guys bouncing back and forth between the majors yes. and the minors. It and just, what that takes. It feels, it feels different. It's not... I can't watch it with the same... Uh, I don't know what... The naivety that I used to, I suppose. I... Totally agree. Totally agree. And you're hearing the voice you're watching here on Facebook Live in the background. You hear Greg Larson. He's coming in via Zoom from Austin, Texas. And uh, he has his new puppy there. So every once in a while, you're going to hear the puppy pop up there in his lap. Penguin. Oh, there's Penguin. Look at there. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Facebook, there's Penguin. And, uh, I'm sure your girlfriend loves Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, the book, The Clubby, we'll be talking about that here shortly on the radio here on Business Leaders Live on Talk Radio 1550 KXEX. That's if Jared doesn't tear apart the studio. Yeah, sorry he's, about that, guys. He's tearing everything up over here. I just uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's excited. <laughs> we'll be going live here shortly. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Of course. 30 seconds remaining. Stand by. We're about 20 seconds away from live radio. 15 seconds. Please stand by. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind-the-scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. And now, here's your host, Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders Live. It took a hiatus and was gone for a couple of weeks, and it was uh, it was needed there. And uh, glad to be back in the saddle, as we call it, Woody. Woody and Jose here in the studios here at Talk Radio 1550 KXEX. Uh, thanks for having me back and uh, everybody out there listening to Business Leaders Live. Every week on Business Leaders Live, Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., I bring you a guest from the Valley and abroad talking about business and uh, being in the trenches of business. And this past year has been, it's been a tough one for people. It's been a tough one, but a lot of people have pivoted. A lot of people have come up with something new. And uh, I, I'm hearing every day about a new guest and a great guest. And you should take a look at this guy and Dr. Jared Mosley, good friend of the show and a good friend of mine, the team dentist of the Fresno Grizzlies and uh, a team dentist of many families and teams <laughs> in our Valley. You're a big supporter of youth athletes. I talk about it every week on the show and I tell them all the time about uh, what you do for them. So. In studio now, I have Dr. Jared Mosley, but also joining Dr. Jared Mosley is a guy he recommended that wrote this book right here. And if you're watching this on Facebook, The Clubby. And in the business of baseball, look, I'm tearing the studio apart now. In the business of baseball, Greg Larson, the author of the book, also stand-up comedian. Also, uh, you've, you've lived the life of what it is behind the scenes in baseball in the uh, minor league baseball uh, memoirs in your book. So, Greg, thank you for being on the show as well. Thanks for having me. Perfect. So, Greg's, Greg's coming in via Zoom from Austin, Texas. If you want to watch the show, you can go to TR1550KXEX. But to start the show off, as I always do, Dr. Jared Mosley makes yeah. mouth guards for youth athletes in the Central California area absolutely for free. That's right. And you do that to protect their curly whites, their protect teeth. Protect them. 
And I know we you got to take care of our athletes. You're involved with uh, youth athletes. I am with very much little so. Leagues. Yeah, little league, River Park Little League here in Fresno. Yeah. yeah. And why? Why is that so important to you with youth athletes? To give back. You know, I had coaches when I was growing up, and I had you know adults around me that it took care of us, and it's time for me to take care of them. I'm at that age, and I want to participate in our community, and that's what we do. I know in the beginning of the pandemic, even talking about giving back and doing something good for your community, it's always baseball, Greg, with the Dr. Jared Mosley. He's a big <laughs> fan. Mm -hmm. He took the old team jerseys from the Fresno Grizzlies and was like, what? I need them all. Give me what you have. And he was talking to the clubbies <laughs> and he was making masks. So he didn't want his people to go home and not have work. So no, we he kept didn't. them employed, we kept did. them working, and they made masks. It was like a sweatshop. It was. I was in the back in the break room. I even room. had my mom involved in it. <laughs> they were back there making masks, <laughs> and they had these out of the jerseys, so the F so, slash of the Fresno mm -hmm. Grizzlies, and they were distributing them to uh, elderly people. Elderly that, people that have masks. Yeah, yeah. our patients and, and, and non-patients that couldn't get masks at that time. You got to think back. What were we doing at that time? We couldn't get masks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, did what we had to do and uh, cut up a few jerseys and. Uh, cut up one that I wish we wouldn't have cut up, but we did yeah. anyways. <laughs> I think it was the, the Ricky of the year. Yeah. <laughs> American leader. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. anyways, we won't talk about that. We'll but. talk about, yeah, you're still stressing about <laughs> it. A little, a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, we had a good time. We stayed working and, uh, we stayed focused and, uh, we, we got, we're, we're getting through it. Getting so, through it. Yeah. Everybody's pulling through it now. Right. And, and during that time, and you sent me a message, it was on LinkedIn. You said, Lance, you've yes. got to see, uh, and uh, read this book and it's called the clubby uh, clubby and you're you'll get it you'll get it you'll love it this guy he's great and I want to hook you up with him and have you on your radio show so Greg and I had a chat about it and then uh, I've been going through the book and, and I love it so t tell me Greg the clubby give me uh, the background I know it was Baltimore Oreos and, the, right. and, and how did you get your start in the business of baseball yeah, I mean, when I grew up, I was a huge, I grew up in Minnesota, so I grew up a huge Minnesota Twins fan. And I don't know, like a lot of kids, I had a dream of being a major leaguer one day, but I couldn't hit. I mean, my senior year of high school, I hit .091. In, and you got to keep in mind, this is central Minnesota. This is hockey country. Like, yeah. baseball is not the sport, and I still was not very good. But I just kind of kept in the orbit of the game for the longest time. And then once I graduated college, I had a year of experience as a college clubby and I thought, okay, I'm graduating in 2011. There's a huge economic crisis. I have an English degree. There's no way that I'm going to get a job as a professional writer immediately. So I went into professional baseball instead. It's like, even as a huge fan, I was completely blown away by how different this world was than everything I expected it to be. Yeah. And then, so when you got involved with baseball, writing was your background. Did you yeah. want to write in the business of sports and baseball and then ended yeah, up I mean, get taking a clubby it's the, job? It's the weirdest. Like I was just living my life. I had no idea of being a sports writer. I didn't expect to write a memoir based on those seasons. I just showed up and I realized that there was something interesting going on here. And I just started keeping notes. Like it really started when I realized that I was, I was literally washing the jock straps as the clubby, you know, my job was to do anything that would, you know, it enter the purview of the clubhouse and that would include, um, you know, feeding the team, washing their laundry, doing tobacco runs, swinging deals with the uh, beer supplier. <laughs> and I just realized, like, I'm the guy who's doing all that gopher type stuff. And I was yeah. making three times as much as the players. And I was like, there's something, there's an interesting dynamic going on here. I don't know what the story is, but I'm just going to keep track of things. Yeah. And by the end of my second season, I had 280 pages of notes that I was like, okay, I, mean, I, I got to turn this into a book somehow. Wow. Wow. And you just recorded everything that you were doing and just so you can look back on it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it just started me keeping a journal. I keep a very obsessive journal to the point where, uh, you know, maybe my therapist would recommend that I don't so obsessively keep track of actual <laughs> conversations and dialogue and stuff. But as a memoirist, it was an invaluable resource. I mean, you can see how in the book, like I just put you in the scene. That's because I'm an ob obsessive journaler. I'm not going to say journalist because there's nothing objective about the book, but I'm an obsessive journaler. Yeah. And just recording that moment in time where you can go back and take a look at it. And people like Jared and myself yeah, yeah and other people that love the game that you can take a look at. I love the, I like the business side of the game. You know, I've worked in and I still do in professional wrestling. I love the business side of the business and it's, 
it's very similar to everything in business. And just like baseball, there's the behind the scenes and the inner working, the front office, the people, the clubbies. And it's funny when you see the visiting team, we were talking about this with the Grizzlies, Jeff Little and Derek, uh, that when the visiting teams, they were excited to see the people. They were like, hey, it's the guy. It's yeah. The guy. That's the guy that takes care of us or that's the guy that makes the tacos. You that's know? right. <laughs> they remember that and they love you. And they, do you still stay in contact with some of the players over all these years? Oddly enough, the only time I've reached out or the only time I've reconnected with the players has been with the book release. I mean, I guess it makes sense. But before that, I interviewed some guys while I was writing the first draft. But there's about five years there where I didn't talk to anybody. Yeah. But now with the book coming out, guys have been reconnecting with me. They've been thanking me for telling their stories and letting the world know like what that place is really like. And, yeah. you, you know, you talk about yeah. visiting teams being excited to go to a stadium because there's some idiosyncrasy in the stadium. Like, oh, you know, this stadium has the best tacos, whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, that that's minor league baseball. Anything to get you out of the monotony of what you already know is just the rarest treat and you treasure it so much, even if it's just a taco or cinnamon pecans at a stadium or something. Yeah. And it, like you said, you ran and you grabbed smokes for the guys or whatever, the tobacco, uh, mm -hmm. they remember that, you know, and they, and they remember that and they come back and a example with the Grizzlies, uh, the gentleman takes care of the field. David is it or David, um, David, as everybody calls them. Exactly. The visiting Dominican uh, teams that visit, they know after the game, they got tacos. Like he's making authentic tacos in the shed <laughs> and they're excited. And, and they, they stay around. And they stay around. And if he doesn't at the end of the homestand do that, they're like, what's wrong? <laughs> they're freaked out. That's baseball though. That's what I yeah. love about baseball is all of the non, it's such a slow game that it allows for all of the non-baseball things to become more important. I yeah. love that about the game. And, and, yeah. and that really is, it's a family you know, atmosphere with everybody right. uh, behind the scenes. There's a uh, camaraderie. You see it. And uh, it's a special club, as, it is. as you could tell. So in the book, The Clubby, how can people get that book? And when we get back, we're going to take a break here in just a couple minutes. Uh, we'll talk about some stories in that book and get into the, the weeds a little bit with it. But how do they get the book now, The Clubby? Our club. Uh, the easiest place for them to get it is on Amazon, but it's available at Barnes & Noble. You can get it from my publisher, University of Nebraska Press. Or you can get a signed copy at clubbybook.com, C-L-U-B-B-I-E-book.com. Perfect. So Greg Larson is on via Zoom. You can catch us on Facebook and we're going to go through some of those stories and talk about a minor league baseball memoir when we come back with more business leaders live. Uh, Dr. Jared Mosley joining me in the studio. And uh, I think we're going to break. Are we going to break, Woody? Oh, we're going to break. I don't let's see the clock there, but we'll go to break. We'll be right back with more business leaders live. Don't go away. <laughs> Yeah, it still, still says one minute on the clock. What? Yeah, that's why I heard the music. I went, oh, no, we're going. Yeah, we take the break at 17.30. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it it's still counting over here on the clock, too. Okay. Well, now I know that you're going to have to give me the 30 sign or something. Or when you hear the music, as soon as you hear the music, that's your 30-second cue. Okay. As soon as you hear the music. And then I'll do a 30 seconds in my head. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work. You know, it's that first, yeah, cuz it's, it's still that, it's always that first uh segment segment that throws me off. I don't know why, but All right. The so next one is 14 minutes. Perfect. We're still on Facebook Live, just letting you guys know. And uh and if you're watching Facebook Live, you get to see Greg Larson calling in from Austin, Texas, talking about the book Clubby and uh in his lap occasionally you'll see his new puppy, Penguin. So Penguin <laughs> right. will hop up there every once in a while. Penguin is pretty cool. So you can catch us. Uh, you're already here on Facebook, so make sure you share it with everybody else and they can uh, join in on the conversation. If you have any questions or anything, uh, you can post those and we'll make sure we get those answers to you and, and make sure you go out and you get the book, Clubby. It's a pretty, pretty cool read. I'm going to have to cool read. dig into it now. It's good. And, it's uh, good. So when we come back, I want to talk about uh, when, you first, when you first got in uh, to working as a Clubby never done it before you know what was that experience like so i'm sure you got thrusted Perfect. into it like most uh baseball jobs it's like there's no oh, formal okay. training it's like here you go no, no there is no formal. <laughs> it's like how did you get that job well it's it's not like an application yeah. <laughs> you go to school for it right. no no it's no. like 
yeah, this is what you do. All right. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll roll through that when we come back on. Also, if you join us here on Facebook, a little bit later, we'll be having uh, Derek Franks, president of the Fresno Grizzlies, calling in. May 11th is opening day here for Fresno Grizzlies, so we'll be calling in shortly. 15 seconds, stand by. We'll be going to the radio in 15 seconds here on Facebook. Make sure you share it, you post, you like. From KXEX 1550, this is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind-the-scenes story of business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. And now here's your host, Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders Live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. I bring you another edition of Business Leaders Live, and this week's a special one. I have our sponsor of the show, Dr. Jared Mosley. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Dr. Jared Mosley, uh, live in studio. Team dentist of the Fresno Grizzlies uh, recommended this gentleman that's on the via Zoom. And if you go to Facebook at TR1550, KXEX on Facebook, you can join us in the conversation right there on Facebook. And live from Austin, Texas, we have Greg Larson with the book Clubby. And we were talking about working as a clubby and explained for anybody who's just joined us on the show, what is a clubby? What does a clubby do? Clubby is a term of affection for a clubhouse attendant in professional baseball. Basically, a clubby does anything that needs to be done inside of a, uh, a baseball clubhouse. So the main duties are feeding the team, doing their laundry, making sure that they're happy, making sure that they don't have to think about anything other than what's going on on the field. Absolutely. And then that, that's, it, that's the smallest of the, the stuff you have to do because right. I see, I've seen you guys last minute <laughs> throwing equipment in a van, racing it to the airport, or, or maybe equipment didn't make it on time and you got to get it from the airport and get it to the spot. And you have to pick somebody up that wasn't on the bus. <laughs> it's always something. hundred oh, percent. I mean, yeah. I've literally cleaned poop off the walls because oh, nobody else was there to do it. Like that's what we do. <laughs> I don't want to know how it got there, but I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, don't either. Oh boy. Yeah. You hear it all here on business leaders live. So Greg Larson that wrote the book clubby. So you're talking about the experiences in your book and it's uh, it, it's, there's some funny stories in here and you're a stand up comedian also. So a writer, stand up comedian, you find yourself as a clubby and you start recording everything and you're going through it uh, in, and you've gone through the book. Jared. Oh, yeah. You've gone through the book, and, yeah. and I know you're entertained by a lot of the stuff. That <laughs> There's some things there. that are entertaining, for yeah. sure. What's one of your favorite stories well, that just I, comes top of mind, Just Jared? top of mind is, is Mike Yaz the bat. I mean, that was hysterical because I have a, a Mike Yaz bat in the office, and I, I, when he wrote that down. Yeah. You got to tell, tell me you about gotta that. You got to tell it, Greg. Tell, tell I, it, Greg. Mike Yaz the bat. Of course. I mean, as a clubby, I had all kinds of schemes going on with myself, visiting teams, the the uh, stadium, whatever it may be. One of my schemes, so I would provide the team with bats as, you know, as the clubby. And what I realized is that if if I gave broken bats to the hangar, our gift shop in the front office, we could sell them to fans for 20 bucks a pop. Yeah. All they asked I do was on a piece of athletic tape, write down who the bat belonged to. Uh -huh. And so at the beginning, I would make the players trade me their broken bat in order to get a new bat ostensibly so that I could keep the, some sort of honor system, but really I tried to, to get sales up in the uh, the gift shop. So at first I was very honest about it. I was like, oh, this bat came from Manny Hernandez. I'm going to write his name and number. Oh, this bat came from Trey Mancini. I'm going to write his name and number. But what I found out is that certain bats sold a lot faster than other bats. So like Trey Mancini, who's now a starting first baseman DH with the Orioles, was a very highly touted prospect at that time. Mike Yastrzemski was on the team at that time. I found out that a number 51 Mancini bat or a number 28 Yaz bat would sell a lot faster than anyone else's. So then I just started flooding the market with their bats fraudulently. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, at least they touched. Nobody... Did you have them touch it at least? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, Lance, but you're you're assuming like way too much way ethical too much. responsibility on my part. <laughs> yes. Greg, I think you upended the entire collectible market. <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh, everybody even and does. so then i get on the show and and jared tells me that he's got he's got a yastrzemski bat and i started my heart started racing pretty fast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
good, but you got the real deal. I, I, yeah, I got at the, least you think I, you I did. did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. You did. But, okay. <laughs> but I think it's great. Jared got it from a reputable source. Yeah, he actually right. got it from the man himself, <laughs> not himself. some slimy club in Aberdeen. <laughs> So everybody in Aberdeen right now is like, wait a minute. Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> oh, boy. That's good. That's oh, good. Boy. What, so one of the, the duties as a clubbing, mm-hmm. one that maybe you just could not stand, <laughs> and there was many, but what was one that yeah. you really could not stand, Greg? I mean, taking out the trash was one of those things where – so. The things that show up in a trash can in a minor league baseball clubhouse. <laughs> and it's, there's so much. That's the thing is there's so many dip cups. There's so many like old athletic tape and there's yeah. so much. And there's a lot of, there's a lot more pointy objects in a baseball clubhouse than you might expect. <laughs> so every once in a while, it'll puncture the bag. Oh. And I remember one time I had a full bag of trash just explode on oh, me. Oh, no. And just all that dip spit and all that disgustingness from a clubhouse just <laughs> everywhere. And I was like, well, there's nobody to clean this up except for me. So I guess I just got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> that uh, one I could do without. So to become a clubby, Greg, we were talking about this during the break. Uh, there's no manual. There's no you go to school for it. And this is how it works. Uh, you, no. you go in, you get the job. And the guy before you shows you this is how it's done. Uh, how did, how does it, uh, how was the training process to become a clubby? I appreciate that's a very generous way to describe it as training process because they basically just told me to go to Ed Smith stadium in Sarasota and meet up. Uh, so I'll step back a second. I was in yeah. Fort Myers living with my parents at the time, driving up to Aberdeen for this job and between Fort Myers and Aberdeen is Sarasota, Florida just so happens to be the location of the Oriole spring training complex. My new boss in Aberdeen said, stop by, see Jake Parker at Ed Smith Stadium. He'll tell you what to do for the job. And I get a two-hour crash course. I'd show up, and, and there's guys, there's there's major leaguers in this clubhouse. There's minor leaguers in this clubhouse. There's major league and minor league staff all mingling together. And I just show up, and I'm greenhorn. And this guy, everything is moving so fast. He says, here's what you do for laundry. Here's the best system to get the laundry going. And then you make sure that the players take their jerseys off. He's giving me all these words, post game spread, charge them $7 for dues. It's just like, I thought I was a baseball fan and I thought I knew a lot about the game, but I realized I knew nothing about baseball once I started working in baseball. And after that two hours, he said, grab some food from the cafeteria, slap me on the back and said, good luck up in Aberdeen. That was it. (laughs) That was it. Go figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) That's minor league baseball, man. There's no, yeah. I mean, you think that you guys know there's no HR in a clubhouse. It was yeah. so weird in the off season. I worked in a liquor store and it was the kind of place where you had to like not use the F word in general conversation. And it was yeah. so hard for me because I was in the clubhouse where people, it's like a sign of respect to be vulgar, you know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're it live was, on the radio, it, by the way. So <laughs> just to remind you, you know, we're live on the radio. I was waiting for what Greg is, to say what, it. What he's getting nervous over there. <laughs> I just wanted to make you guys a little bit anxious. I know better than that. Oh, I love it. I love it. The, yeah, but it's like it's a country of its own in the clubhouse. You know, they yes. it, yeah, it's it's their clubhouse. That's why it's called clubhouse. And it's a bunch right. of uh at times too, you feel like it's a bunch of uh uh, it's like a frat house. <laughs> it's a bunch it of is. kids. I mean, it really yeah. is. It's its own country. Yeah. It even has its own legal system. We had a kangaroo court where we would find right. people for doing silly stuff on the field. If some guy wore the wrong, if some guy wore the wrong jersey going outside, or if he did something, one of the guys tried to get a phone number from a girl in the stands, and he got rejected. He got fined for that. So I mean, it's, like, <laughs> it's an entire ecosystem. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's like the fire department, Kings County, you know, superior dairy ice cream. That's what I do. Yeah. And the fire department, if you got in the picture, I was a photographer for the newspaper. And if you got a fireman in the front page of the paper, the firemen used to run. They would stop fighting the fire. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? No, don't put me in the picture. Why? Cause I have to buy milkshakes and superior dairy for all the departments. <laughs> I'm sure they don't do that anymore, but they would panic, you know, so I, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, yeah. They, that was their, their honor system of their kangaroo court, <laughs> yeah. how they That's took right. care of their club. The um, if, if you could go back and do it again, you know, what would you do different, Greg, when you started as a clubby 
in the minor league baseball system, what would you do different knowing all the information you have today? What would you do? Wow. I think because, I mean, there are a lot of funny stories from that time and the book is has its funny moments, but it is like a very serious introspective book because I can sometimes be a very introspective guy. And like, I still do feel a lot of, I don't know, maybe it's guilt. I, f I feel a little bit guilty about how I, in different ways, took advantage of the players. Like, just, I, I think I wouldn't have, ch I think I wouldn't have charged so much in dues to the players. I charged them $7 a day. I didn't need to charge them that much because I was making a, a, more money than them. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been so much of a stickler about tips. I didn't need to get all those tips. A, a lot of the money stuff actually, um, it, it bothers me. And that's what I think about now when I look at the changes to minor league baseball is I think about the money, how, how minor leaguers are treated financially. And it's all tied into my experience yeah. as a clubhouse tenant. Well, they're not making that much and they're either just trying to make their way to get to the big leagues. Right. And these are is sometimes kids that haven't had an opportunity to really get to the real world. They've gone right from high school, college, and then boom, they're thrusted into a system. Uh, so right. and explain that, how that works too. So as a clubby, that's, you charge dues and fees. Yeah, it's and a, has, how, how luckily this is changing this year, but yeah. at that time the, the players would pay me a set amount of dues every game. Got it. Um, on the surface, it's meant to pay for the doing their laundry and to pay for pre and post game meals. Yeah. But the question that nobody asked is like, what, why is it the player's obligation to, to pay right. Yeah. to be fed at the stadium where they work, where they have to be for like 12 hours a day. Got so it. I charge $7 a day. And in theory, that was for food and laundry. And then they'd tip me for extra gopher runs. Absolutely. The, uh, and it, Greg, if you don't mind too, here the Fresno Grizzlies are getting ready to go uh, with opening day here on May 11th. Right. And we have uh, Derek Franks, the president of the Fresno Grizzlies calling in. And we wanted to give a little love at our hometown team with the Fresno Grizzlies, President Derek Franks on the line. How you doing, Derek? Hey, Lance, how are you, my friend? Doing good, my brother. We have uh, Greg Larson on with the book Clubby, so we're we're uh, we're talking about all the crazy stuff that happens down there in the clubhouse, which I'm sure you hear stories all the time, Derek. <laughs> yes, there are. Uh, you know, I've worked for the Grizzlies for about uh, coming up on 18 years now, and. Uh, I, as a guy who's not in the clubhouse that often in the role that I have, uh, I'm well aware of the of many many uh, stories uh, from the clubhouse over the years, for sure. Some really good ones. I'm sure. I'm sure you've had to intervene on some of those stories at time to time. The uh, also in the studio live too <laughs> that recommended Greg that wrote the book Clubby uh, is Dr. Jared Mosley, the team dentist of the Fresno. Hey, Do you know this guy? I do. Uh, I, I trust Jared with my teeth, and so do many uh, <laughs> current and former Grizzlies players, coaches. And uh, so, yes, absolutely. Hey, doctor. Hey, Derek. How are you doing? So, the uh, we're going to take a short break here in a little bit. But uh, Greg was talking about working in Baltimore Orioles, uh, and it was the what what uh, level of ball was this, Greg? Sh short season single A, the New York Penn League, which no longer exists. No longer exists. No longer exists. And, and, and as we have just a couple of minutes, everything, I, I want to remind people, even Grizzlies were triple-A baseball. Now we're single-A baseball. That's correct. But I'm going to tell you this, 40-some teams, what, 42, don't exist anymore. As Greg just attested to that, they don't exist anymore. So I think Fresno is really lucky. And I think the yes. city of Fresno, the Fresno Grizzlies in the community, uh, embracing this team and making it happen, Derek, uh, Big win to you guys. May 11th is opening day. I'm excited. Yeah, we're right down to it. May 11th, a little little uh, delayed start here. And, uh, you know, after a year off and a little bit of a delay to start this year, there's a lot of excitement to get back to Chichancy Park. And uh, we're, we're, uh, we couldn't be more thrilled. And I'll tell you, the ballpark is wild right now with um, signage being put up and all the finishing touches being put on the next – a couple of weeks for uh, the reopening. We're, we're looking forward to it. Awesome. President Derek Franks, Fresno Grizzlies, calling in here on Business Leaders Live. When we come back after the commercial break, Derek, thank you for calling in. More with Greg Larson, the clubby, a memoir or minor league baseball memoir. We'll talk about that when we come back here on Business Leaders Live. Don't go away. Derek, you still there? All clear. He drop off. 
He's gone. Okay, if you're, you're well, he's not. If you're listening on Facebook, thank you, Derek, for calling in. Appreciate <laughs> that. Everybody on Facebook, make sure you share it and you put it out there. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you drop it on there. And uh, I tell you what, the the Jeff Little, uh, Big Derek. Yes. Not not Derek that called on the phone, but Big Derek. And forget right. Derek's last name, but the the visiting clubbies. Uh, those are hardworking guys, man. And they're no longer here. Yeah. And during the pandemic, they've all found different uh, spots and pivoted. But um, you work hard, Greg. <laughs> you know, during the commercial break, that's that was, uh, I'm sure, an engrilling uh, time. And, and you're always throwing a curveball. There's always something oh, new, always. right? Not everything is a smooth day at work. No, <laughs> no it, it's so unpredictable that, um, I, I mean, in a weird way, it was incredible job training for like every job I could ever have because this just like everything is thrown at you and you just have to, I don't know what, wheel and deal. Yeah, yeah. You got a creative of your own. We're still at commercial break we are. on Facebook, but we'll be right back with radio. What would you Greg, Greg when, you were, when you'd have visiting Clubhouse, how did you handle it? When I was working both sides, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That I only did that for a week or so. I mean, how did I handle? It? I was just I had a golf cart, thank God, and I could shuttle back and forth to both sides. That was like the saving grace. But I was up until like two a.m. doing laundry each night. It was uh, <laughs> that's that's all I could do. Is how did I handle it? I just back boing 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 just back and forth, back and forth, taking care of both clubhouses. Yes, but oh. then I could not last doing that. I had to hire a visiting clubhouse attendant. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm that's... sure everybody needed something and they needed it now. Yeah. No, yeah. I can only imagine. When we come back, oh, yeah. is there anything we want to hit on, Greg, that we haven't? I, I'm most interested in what you guys are interested in. You guys know the world. The, you guys, I'm curious about what you're curious about. Anything you guys want to talk about. Cool, cool. Woody, how much time do we have before we come back? 15 seconds. Stand 15 by. seconds. We'll be back to radio. Stand by here, Facebook. Greg, how do you uh, feel about anybody? We're coming radio. Oh, sorry. Yeah, hold on. Vocal will lead in. Giving you the inside story of business leaders in the Valley and beyond. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody. Business Leaders live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And usually about this point, I remind everybody that the show is brought to you by Dr. Jared Mosley. So, yeah, I'm going to embarrass him, Greg. I'm going to embarrass him, Greg. Dr. Jared Mosley takes care of your team uh, uh, right there at his uh, dentist office. And your team, I have to tell you, since I have you in person, yeah. everybody that works for you is a joy. They're a pleasure. Thank and you. When people come down there, uh, you don't feel like you're going to the dentist's office. You really, you enjoy it. We want you to feel like you're going to Cheers. Yeah, you're going to Cheers. Yeah. You're going to go hang Everybody out. Everybody knows your name. Hey, where's my beer then? That's no. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you you got to get to about 85 and then we'll give yeah. you a beer. Just yeah, well, kidding. Yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Jared Mosley sitting in here in the studios and he recommended this gentleman, Greg Larson, and I'm so glad. But uh, the book Clubby, and we've been talking about Clubby and working in, in the clubhouse at uh, a minor league system and uh, the stories and everything that comes along with it. Uh, what is one of the funniest moments, Greg? And then, uh, or actually, Jared, you had a question before that. Well, I just wondered how, Greg, that, how yeah. you felt about uh, downsizing the minor league system. Yeah, that's a complicated one. I, I feel like I have my foot in both camps. From, from living, you know, my second season, I literally lived in the clubhouse from a player perspective, clubhouse perspective. Quite frankly, I think it's a good thing. It's something necessary. I think Major League Baseball probably was not going to give their minor league players a salary increase without contraction. So I think about a lot of municipalities like Frederick, Maryland, they lost their affiliation with the Frederick Keys. But at the same time, like a stadium like that, Harry Grove Stadium was decrepit. Their front office was a trailer in the parking lot that they were renting for $10,000 a year. And guys at short season single A, when guys would get moved up, they would be upset because they were going to a facility that was worse than where they were at short season. Mm -hmm. So frankly, I think it's a good thing for baseball in the long term, even if some of those cities and towns are going to have some fans that aren't close to a baseball team. You have to ask yourself, at what cost was that proximity to a minor league baseball system? Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. And, and, so, and I think a lot of businesses, just like Major League Baseball, during the time of the pandemic, we're forced to make decisions. And I think these decisions were 
set way in advance, but just oh, yeah. timing wasn't right. And everything was moving at the speed of light. We were moving so fast. And I think what the pandemic did for a lot of businesses is allowed you to reset a little bit, regroup, pivot, and figure out what you need to do for the future to get your business right. And there's been a, including a, I feel bad for restaurants because restaurants made it, it was very tough for them to survive, but a lot, a lot of them pivoted. A lot of them did something a little different or they did those things that they never could do during the, time of the pandemic. So uh, there has been good things that have come for businesses through the process. Uh, a lot of tragedy and a lot of uh, stuff that we couldn't prevent through the process of dealing with it. But I think at the same time, uh, a lot of good things have happened. And I think, the restructuring, like you said, is probably, it's a good thing. You know, it might be hard for someone that doesn't have baseball still in their community, but uh, in the long run, it's going to pay dividend. I believe that it's going to do well. And I think Fresno uh, should be thankful and very lucky uh, that we have this opportunity to have Major League Baseball still in town. May 11th is opening That's day. Great. And I encourage everybody to get out there. You can't do capacity in the stadium, but you got to go out and support baseball. It's a lot of fun. And you look at it through a different lens, especially when you see and watch uh, on Facebook Live this show, Business Leaders Live, or you listen to it uh, with Greg Larson, sort of give you a little bit of behind the scenes. So as a clubby in the clubhouse, and I'm sure in the book, once I get through it, I'll see some of those funny stories. What's one of them that stands out to you, Greg? That was one of those that, oh, and is it safe to tell on the radio? That's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, I have radio safe content here. <laughs> okay. I got you guys all nervous. Yeah. Like you guys have your own <laughs> HR department. Um, but you get, well, as you guys know, when a major leaguer does a rehab uh, assignment in the minors, it's customary for them to buy food for the team, the post game spread. Um, so we had Brian Roberts, the second base, the then second baseman from the Baltimore Orioles, come do a rehab stint with us in Aberdeen. He had just gotten off the DL with an oblique injury. So he comes to me just like 15 minutes before game time, before he's slated to start at second base. And he comes to me and he's like, hey man, like, I know I'm too late to get the spread for the guys tonight, but um, you know, is there a nice restaurant in Aberdeen that I could get them the spread for tomorrow night? I was like, best restaurant is Applebee's. And he said, okay, here's my credit card, go grab it for them tomorrow night. <laughs> so then so then I got, I got Brian's credit card in my wallet, which, it, never give a clubby money, just yeah. never give a clubby a blank check, first of all, but that yeah. he yeah. it worked out for him just fine. Um, and so the next day, nobody cared about the, the outcome of the game. Nobody cared about how Brian's start went. Nobody in our clubhouse cared about anything other than we're going to get Applebee's after the second game. Because like in minor league baseball, that's a huge treat to get a nice <laughs> something yeah, different. Chicken. Something different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anything different. And so the next day I show up, I still have um, Brian's credit card. The next day I show up and in the clubhouse, you know, four hours before game time, there's a press conference on ESPN and it's Orioles manager, Buck Showalter and Brian Roberts doing a press conference. They're saying that they're shutting down his, his rehab start the game before in Aberdeen went so poorly that they're shutting him down for the entire season and that he's having season ending surgery and he's not going to do the rehab stint game that night. And everybody across Orioles Nation, I'm sure, was like, oh, man, there goes our second baseman. And all of us in the clubhouse were like, oh, crap, there goes our post-game spread. Yeah. So <laughs> They're more worried about the food. <laughs> of course. So I got to go sh go down to Baltimore, shuttle his credit card back to him, and we had to have wrinkly old hot dogs from concession stand left <laughs> that night. <laughs> <laughs> so they were bummed. It, you know, and it's funny when I interviewed players because I produced the TV with the Grizzlies and we had interviewed players, uh, they, the things they, they missed about Fresno during the pandemic. And I don't know if the, most of those clips aired, but uh, the thing that they always talked about was the restaurants. They loved mm. a certain place to go eat. It, it was really, that yeah, was yeah, what yeah. was yeah. important, like what you're talking about. Uh, yes. They loved the certain places to go eat. And I remember when the Astros were here, when they were teaching some of the players from the Dominican to speak English and they would, every Tuesday they'd bring in a translator and, and she would work with them to speak English. And I remember they talked about ordering food. It was, uh, that was their biggest stress was ordering food. So it's funny you talk about that because that's very important to them that, you know, food is where the heart is, you know, you hit, you hit them where they, they love that food. And um, I remember the lady speaking to one of the guys from Dominican it's a famous player now, and I can't remember the name, but she said, so how do you order? If you go to a Mexican restaurant, how do you order? She goes, well, what I do is I order number four. He goes, four, cuatro. 
and uh, and she said, well, how do you know that's any good? And he goes, well, uh, uno is a taco. And he said, dos is a taco and a tostada. Uh, tres, uh, you know, three. Four, four. You know, and he, <laughs> so he was all excited about it. You know, four, cuatro, you know, it's good. You know, it was funny. She goes, how do you know it's good? She goes, it's got to be better than uno. <laughs> <laughs> So that was it. That's was, all anybody cares about in the clubhouse. It was like, food. Every, every, <laughs> nobody every cared discussion. about how I washed their pants or yeah. anything like that. They only cared about the food. The food. It was the most important. <laughs> so if you have good food, so Derek, take notes. <laughs> but the Grizzly, if you have good food, you're going to keep those players happy. That's right. But that's funny. So when, the, and I didn't know that. You probably do because you're closer to yep. clubhouse down yep. there. But uh, so a major league player, when you get called up, you feed the yep. team. That's right. I didn't do that. You do something special for for your team and do that. Uh, Greg, when we come back from the break and give you a little heads up, if uh, you'll tell us one thing about yourself that maybe someone doesn't know about yourself, something uh, unique, it's a hobby, it's something, let's talk about uh, before the break, talk about your stand-up comedian career. We'll talk about that. But uh, during the break, give you just a moment to think about it. When we come back, you'll be able to share that. And uh, we have one more segment here, Business Leaders Live. but. Uh, tell me about uh, your stand-up comedy career and uh, what you've been doing with that. Uh, yeah, once again, very generous description, calling it a career. <laughs> I do a lot of I do a lot of open mics around Austin. I do a few showcases here and there. Uh, interestingly enough, at the end of January, I did get COVID, and so I was I was laid out for about ten days, and that just put me. Well, yeah. like you're talking about, Lance, it just put, puts the brakes on things for a little bit and gives yeah. you a chance to reassess. And so I haven't been on stage for a couple of months that I've been doing the book promo tour. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of comedians do. Yeah. Uh, especially here in California, the ones I've known too, it's been very hard for them to get out. And and that that's yeah. a hard thing because a, a comedian needs approval and wants to run their yes. material by everybody and, and test it. But have you participated in any? I've seen some Facebook Live and some Zoom comedy. Have you done any of those? Just to yeah, they, get that interaction? <laughs> yeah, I did some last summer. I mean, if you think uh, my experience of an open mic live, it can be pretty depressing. Just like a, a dozen comics all sitting around blankly staring at each other to tell <laughs> jokes on stage. Just imagine it digitally. It's even more depressing. I just shut the laptop and I'm like, I can't. I did maybe six of those shows and I just could not do it anymore. <laughs> I wanted to go jump off a bridge after the show, so I was done with you it. You felt like it was AA of comedians all coming together. <laughs> you remember really when we used desperate? to have fans? <laughs> right. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. So, Greg, you're, you're busting up laughing. Everybody else is looking back at you, not even smiling. <laughs> oh, 100%. People have their mics <laughs> muted and everything. I'm like, what are we doing here? I'm just... I may as well just talk to a brick wall. I'm not accomplishing anything at this point. <clears throat> Greg Larson, but, but, the, uh, the author of Clubby. We're talking to him here on Business Leaders Live. One more time, too. Tell, tell everybody how they can get the book Clubby. And this is uh, your memoirs from working in the minor league baseball system as a clubhouse clubby. And they, they affectionately uh, named the clubhouse uh, manager, basically. Attendant. attendant. Yep. Yeah, the clubby. And uh, yep. they, all the duties, everything they don't want to do is what you're doing. So that's the the clubby position. So uh, tell us yeah, how we can get, get the that book, book on Amazon. They can get it at Barnes and Noble. They can get a signed copy at my book website, clubbybook.com. That's C-L-U-B-B-I-E book.com. Awesome. So you got to make sure you get that book, but don't go away. We're going to take a short break here with Greg Larson and also Dr. Jared Mosley in studio. And both of you, we're going to have both of you share something. I always do this to create a connection with other business people or other people that are listening to you. Something that someone maybe doesn't know about you or just a hobby. And uh, you got to keep it PG, Dr. Mosley. You got it. So <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> Business Leaders Live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And you can catch all my past episodes by going to LanceCardoza.com. That's C-A-R-D-O-Z-A dot com. We'll be right back with the final segment here of Business Leaders Live. Don't go away. All righty. I like, Lance, the implication of you telling Jared that he has to keep it PG yeah. implies that you're giving me immunity, which I appreciate. Exactly. You can just tell it like it is. I just can't believe he thinks I need to keep – I would keep it PG. What are yeah, you talking about, Lance? Yeah. It's risky when Mosley's on. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Shoot. The uh, – 
yeah so i always and i I tell this story every week too and i tell it on facebook that telling that something about yourself that someone doesn't know (laughs) has always created a connection i hear about years later someone says hey you know the the guy for the president of that bank shared that information and i saw him speaking at an event and i went up and talked to him and we had something in common and i was able to go talk to him about something because i heard that on your show and now i work as the vice president of that bank you know because of that connection so Mm -hmm. i always find a way to create a connection with somebody else and uh, it's usually something we don't know about that person that creates that connection so uh, where'd penguin go i'm ready to go whenever the time comes yeah where where did penguin go is penguin still running around there (laughs) Uh, penguin is taking a nap and oh, i am not going to disturb don't her wake that up penguin. yeah <laughs> penguin's a little what is she a yorkie she's got some yorkie in her she's incredibly calm but there's about 30 minutes uh, three times a day where she's just like boom all energy <laughs> all energy <laughs> <laughs> and that was right before we were going live and she wanted his attention so uh penguin at the beginning of the facebook live you can catch penguin live on the facebook <laughs> that's good <laughs> so she's cute the uh when we come back we'll we'll talk about that also uh talk about the season getting started with the grizzlies yeah. and then we'll hit one more time about getting the book and how someone cool. can do that and we'll give the information one more time so get a pen and paper ready and you got to get it it's a fun read good stuff woody how how much time we have hey there woody woody doesn't even know no Woody, Woody's got a crew in there getting ready to take the studio over next, I believe. Hey, Greg, how hard was that to get yeah. published? So hard. I, I got rejected 221 times by agents and publishers over the course of years. 221, including my eventual publisher. They rejected me the first time I created how much? Them. How much time, Woody? Uh, we got uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. Wow. Cool. Wow. Correction, yeah. one minute. <laughs> I had a, I, Woody, yeah. let's figure it out. Woody, what are we doing here? You got to figure it out. What's the time? <laughs> no, man, seriously. I, I, man, I got, I mean, you know, I, I, I work at the blink of an eye. So. Yeah. Seriously, man. Don't, no, this is fun. Longer your blinks. 30 second blinks. Come on. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love you, Greg. You're funny, man. <laughs> 212, 212. All right. We got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 221. Ah. Uh. Wow. We'll talk about that as soon yeah. as we come back in, too. This is a shorter segment, too. So we're seven sure. minutes, 50 seconds. 15 seconds, stand by. And I've got a little public service announcement to make. CDC? It's coming in right now. Right now. No more masks. From KXEX 1550, this is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind-the-scenes story of business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. And now here's your host, Lance Cardoza. Welcome back to Business Leaders Live. We've had Greg Larson on the show with the book Clubby and uh, a minor league baseball memoir. And we're going to hear from Greg here in just a moment, talk about something about himself that maybe someone or his close friends doesn't even know about him to create a connection with somebody. And also Dr. Jared Mosley, dentist here in Fresno and the team dentist at the Fresno Grizzlies. And also we'll get something from you to uh, Dr. Mosley. But before that, my phone has been blowing up off the exactly. hook here with my family. Uh, my daughter is opening up a franchise downtown Fresno. It's been long coming and making uh, past her final inspections. So she'll be opening soon Hummus Republic. So Hummus Republic, 80% protein or plant-based and then uh, also protein. So her and her uh, significant other, Steve Martinez, they're going to be opening up Hummus Republic right downtown over in uh, the Tatalian's uh, Silver, oh, Civic okay. Center right. Square area. So that's all going through right now and everybody's all excited. So I wanted to make sure I can announce it because I can't take their call live on the radio, but uh, we're so excited. They were going to open just before the pandemic. And imagine that trying to open a restaurant right at that time and then be able to survive through it and, and be able to do this and have it open. It's beautiful. I have to take you by a take a look yeah. at it. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, Greg, uh, what would you share? So your closest friends or somebody that doesn't know something about you or a hobby or something about you, Greg Larson, the author of the clubby, what, w- what would you share? Yeah, I got into archery last summer actually, ah. and I really liked it. I- I don't know that I'm very good at it, 
But uh, I think most people don't even know that I do that at all. I have a U bow and a dozen arrows in my closet right now. Oh, wow, nice. Wow, wow, wow. What got you started doing that? My brother gave me this, a, a U bow is like a very long bow. He gave it to me when I was 12 years old uh -huh. and it was taller than me. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even pull the string back yeah. and I just carried it around with me across the country every time I moved. And I finally realized like, oh, wait a minute, I'm 31 years old. I think I can actually use the bow now. <laughs> <laughs> and I figured now is as good a time as any as during the pandemic. And I really love it's such a meditative experience. You're just focused on only one thing and you're only focused on your breath and the target. And it just brings you so clearly into the moment. Yeah. Brings you center and you're, you're just drilled in and focused on that one thing. And right. it's in and minds like yours as a writer and a creative and, and trying to, like you say, journal everything probably brings you some peace and uh, some oh, relaxation. I'm usually yeah. going a million miles an hour in here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. I love that. It, it, what would you share, Dr. Jared? Lance, Leslie? I like to paint. You like to paint? I do. And I, I don't what? do it often. And I know you're a I painter. Paint. I know. And yeah. we've never talked about this. What? But uh, acrylic on canvas. And uh, no I really, way. I really, it brings me peace. Yeah. It's, it's it's a quiet time. I haven't been doing it in the last year and a half. Yeah. Uh, but I do enjoy it. I was always someone that liked to draw and whatnot. But uh, so I just I put it no into idea. that. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. So and that's why I share those things. You never know that about somebody. And I I do it because it brings yeah. me peace too. Right. It, you know our mind is going 100 miles an hour. I got a lot of things going on, and I always can tell when I'm painting uh, what mood I'm in. You know, if right. I came out of a a stressed mood is how I'm painting it, it, or if I came out a real happy oh, mood nice. and I want to paint something, that's uh, usually I'm, I'm doing uh, painting animals or something that's, it's a, more of a relaxed feel, right. but it does bring you like it does with archery. It brings you center at that moment. I think that's right. why a lot of people play golf. You know, the same so. thing. It, it, you have to focus on the one thing and you got to shut everything else out of your life and you got to drill down and be right in the moment. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And Greg, uh, have you, and your brother gave you the bow, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, sir. And have, uh, have you uh, reached out to your brother, tell him you're using that bow? Uh, I did. And he basically said it took you long enough. Yeah. <laughs> 31 years old. <laughs> took you long enough. <laughs> yeah. You have to go out and shoot the bow with him and, uh, <laughs> show him maybe you can get really good at it by the time he comes around and, uh, sees you using it. Yeah, you very, can finally get his approval on that. Yeah, well, very cool. You know, very Greg, cool. it's probably best that we're, you're not a clubby at this point with the bow because I could see <laughs> that in the clubhouse that could have been fired oh. uh, with the guys, yeah. like, you know, putting an X on the wall oh, and no. shoot it across the room. Would that not be the case, Greg? <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's good. The uh, what, one thing that you miss – Greg, from being a clubby in baseball, what is the one thing that you wish uh, you could experience again? Taking batting practice with the team was one of the highlights of my professional baseball experience. So being able to go on there, like Alan Mills, 12 years of major league experience was our pitching coach, having him throw me batting practice. And of course, you know, I was hitting like ground balls to the second nubbers, to the second baseman, but I just love that so much, man. That was so exhilarated and I felt like I was really a part of this thing. Yeah. Right. And, and that's why they probably brought you into it too, because you are a part of it, you know? And, uh, and yeah. that's a, like yeah. I've witnessed the clubbies with the Grizzlies that they are the team. This, they're a part of the team. They are. And, uh, in a good clubby, it really makes a big difference in that clubhouse. You can tell that's and, right. and just how it's ran and how the, uh, experiences of the players how their their feeling is and, and working in the media and having to do interviews and and get that stuff lined up if you had a good clubby uh was very organized because you always could go to that clubby and that clubby gets you wherever you need oh i got it right. i gotta take care of and the players would do it for the clubby because the players respected the clubby that's right because they took care of uh, them and for those of you who joined us towards the tail end a clubby is the person that takes care of the clubhouse at a baseball uh team and i can only imagine what it's like on the major league level as being a uh, clubby and you probably met some of those along the line greg oh yeah they have a whole team of guys the needs are a lot more extreme at times so they have a half dozen guys maybe in the clubhouse whereas in minor league ball it's just me yep one more time how do we get clubby the book as we're wrapping up here business leaders live 
Yep, they can get it on Amazon.com, get it at Barnes & Noble, or you can get signed copies at my website, clubbybook.com. That's C-L-U-B-B-I-E-book.com. So that's the way to get it. That's the way to that's get it. it. And that's why, I mean, Dr. Jared Mosley, I think you guys have noticed. I'm jealous. I see a signed copy. Yeah, there's the You got a signed. signed copy here. You can see it on Facebook. You get a signed copy from Greg Larson. Greg, thank you for being on my program, Business Leaders Live. Clubby, go out and get the book. 